Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be filming a little Q&A about my collab palette with Odin's Eye, the Red Dragon palette. In my reveal video, I realized that I didn't talk about why I picked Red Dragon as the theme. I was watching Tina in its video and I realized like I didn't talk about that at all. So I thought I would do a q and A. I I asked you guys over on my Instagram to send some other questions as well. It is going to be a pretty chatty Get ready with me. I'm going to be applying my makeup and just answering your questions. This is the final look that we came up with. So if you guys want to learn more about Red Dragon and sort of the creative process and also this makeup look, then please continue watching. Okay, so I'm starting off with my face already primed just so the primer could settle in a little bit. I'm gonna go in with my Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer today from Colourpop. I'll leave all the product info that I'm using in the description box just because today's video is going to be a Q&A and it's gonna be a little bit chatty and I wanna focus more on the questions rather than the products, but if you are curious, I will leave all of that down below. But okay, let's start off with the reason why I went with the theme of a red dragon. So if you guys are familiar with Odin's Eye, then you would know that they based a lot of their palettes, well, their whole concept of their brand is based on Greek mythological goddesses, creatures, stuff like that. That's like their kind of concept. So when they came to us with this collab idea, they wanted us to choose a mythological creature or figure in our culture. And they actually recommended me to do the Nine-Tailed Fox, which I thought would be like a really cool idea. Um, growing up watching Naruto, you know, the QB, the Nine-Tailed Fox inside of Naruto, like I love that. Like I just thought it was so cool. But I did more research on the Nine-Tailed Fox and I think it like symbolizes like it's a girl that like transforms into a human, steals and plays with guys or something like that. So I was like, oh, can't really relate to that. So I thought I would do something else. Um, but I think if we went with Nine Tail Fox, the packaging would have came out really stunning. But that was like the first option. And then I did my own research and I obviously, I automatically thought of Red Dragon. I think that's just so symbolic to Chinese culture. Like we all know the red dragon, right? Like that's just the image. Um, but I also had the blue tiger. I saw that in Chinese culture that the blue tiger symbolizes the fall season. And I mentioned that Odin's eye wanted me to do like a fall palette. So I thought that would match up, but I'm really glad I didn't go with the blue tiger because I think first, not many people know of the blue tiger. I personally didn't know until I was researching. And I think blue tiger definitely would have clashed with Annette's palette because her palette has more of that blue. And obviously Harry was with me with every step of the way. And he was saying that blue tiger definitely would be more unique. Um, but Red Dragon is more iconic and he thought for, you know, my first ever collection, you know, kind of take the safe route and go with something that's more, you know, well known. So I'm really happy with how everything turned out, but that was like the option. So it would have been Ninetale Fox or Red Dragon or Blue Tiger. I had a mood board for Blue Tiger as well, but definitely Red Dragon I had more ideas with. Because the thing with this process that we did, Annette, Tina and I did not really talk about our palettes to each other. I'm not sure if Annette and Tina did because they were friends before this process. We didn't really talk through this process. Our palettes naturally just came together as one collection and they are just so cohesive without us you know trying to plan that out because that really was not planned because all three of us were working on it on our own like in our own time like we didn't come together and like have a meeting together or anything like it just naturally came like that um, which I think is really beautiful and I was like okay that was just really meant to be but that's pretty much why I went with a red dragon I realized I didn't even like talk about that in my reveal video I was watching Annette and Tina's video and I was like oops I didn't mention <laughs> why I went with Red Dragon. So now moving into your questions, I sort of have divided the questions up. So the first couple of questions is all about the collab process and questions related to that because um, I think that's what most people are interested in. So the first question is, where did you start when creating the shades and names? Was it hard to choose all 12 of them? So what I first did when we decided on Red Dragon and sort of like the color story we wanted to go with, I went into my palettes and swatched 12 shades that that I would like to see 
in um, the palette and then you know I would swatch one shade and I'll be like oh I would like this to be a little bit deeper more rosy more red you know just little feedback on each shade and then Odin's eyes sent the first sample so they sent me like a bunch of like single eyeshadows that was like related to my 12 swatches and they also sent me like extra more shades like possibilities of what I could add in and from that I took 12 and I gave feedback again and in the beginning when I first did my 12 shades I had too many shades I wanted to add in but as I was going through the sample products I didn't know what to add in. Really took Odin's eyes advice. In the beginning, my palette didn't actually have jade in it. And I'm really glad that I did add that green in because I think for a lot of people that love color, they really look at jade and that's the color they love the most. I think for me, like because this was like a theme palette, it made it a little harder for me to decide what I really wanted. Like if I was just creating a palette that's like a Judy palette, like just on me, then I would know exactly what shades I would want to create. Like my dream palette but because this is a bit themed um, I had a little bit more struggle with like still keeping me in it and making it realistic like oh this is a Judy palette but making it red dragon you know so through the stages I did have a little bit of difficulty as for the shade names the shade names were easy because like I mentioned I went uh, to Pokemon attack types that helped a lot but Henji also gave me um, some shade name ideas so I think Aurora was one of them Serene was one of them as well. Um, so he gave me some ideas, I took some, and then most of it I um, named it myself. And the next question says, how much creative freedom did you have when choosing the colors, shadow types, and names? With all of that, colors, shadow types, and names, I had pretty much all control. Um, I could pick whatever I want, um, and they were really lenient. Of course, they gave me feedback, like when I mentioned that I had like 12 mats in the beginning, they were like, oh, maybe add four at least, um, just so the palette is more balanced. And I'm really glad that they did say that. Like, you know, like if I really didn't want four metallics, I could have like, you know, negotiated back and they would be like, okay, you know what I mean? The only thing that I really didn't get creative and freedom of was the packaging that was all designed by Odin's Eye. I did pitch like feedback. Um, I remember my hair and the packaging. I remember my hair and the packaging, it was all red in the beginning. The little flame underneath on my cheek was little triangles. But yeah, my hair was more red in the beginning and you know, I told them that I wanted my hair to be a little bit more black so it would look more like me. Just like little things, um, the color of the dragon, just like feedback, but they did the whole design of this so that way all three could look more cohesive. And then also just like another backstory. I was like really, I couldn't sleep over this, but the inside, you know how it's like really pink? Um, so when they sent me like the digital designs, I approved it, but when I got it in person, like the final first sample, I just thought it didn't match the outside, like the outside was like very orange and then how the inside was like more pinky orange. I just didn't like how it didn't match and that really bothered me, but by the time, you know, I got this final sample, we couldn't do too much changes to the final packaging design. I literally couldn't sleep over that guys, like it bothered me so much. But now, you know, like talking to my friends about it and Harry, everyone's like, you know, it's okay. Like it looks fine. It actually looks better how it's pink because if it was like red or orange, the colors wouldn't stand out. And I think that's why Odin's eye wanted it to be a little bit more pink so it could stand out. So they know what they're doing. And I think, you know, I took a lot of help from them. Even though this is their first collab, obviously they have released so many palettes before this. Um, but that was like one thing that like literally, oh my gosh guys, this whole collab, I, would, I couldn't sleep a lot. <laughs> And I'm a person that sleeps pretty good. <laughs> Everything else I did pretty much have creative freedom of. They they were very lenient. I would say this was definitely a collab. You know, I got to choose the colors, the names. I chose the placement of the colors as well, where I wanted things to go. And Odin's Eye literally like made it come true, you know, using their formula. So that was the creative process. So I think it was really, I want to say 50-50 because I think Odin's Eye really did a lot of the work. So I am just going to go off camera to do my brows because I feel like when I do my brows on camera, they look not good. But before we do that, I'm going to try a new setting mist. So this is the newest one in my project pan. It's from Pixie. It's their Glow Mist. It's my first time using it today. So this could really ruin my entire makeup, but we'll see. And if you guys hear some squeaky noise, it is my chair. I'm gonna... 
Okay, that mist is pretty good. It's really fine, not bad. Just went into my mouth a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna go off camera and do my brows. It feels very old school doing that type of transition. But my brows are on not the best today, but it's gonna have to do. I'm gonna start on the eyes now. So I'll zoom you guys in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. But the next question is, what was your thinking behind adding the pop of Jade Green into the palette? So like I mentioned before, that Jade wasn't actually part of like the initial lineup that I had envisioned. Um, I think the palette was just looking a little bit monochromatic from my first, you know, from my first idea. You know, I live in such a monochromatic mind that sometimes it can get in the way of like my thought process. So um, Jade, there was a color from the samples that they sent me and I thought it would be a really nice off pop of color and I already envisioned calling that shadow Jade um, because you know, Jade Green, the Jade Stone is very symbolic in the Chinese culture. Like, I grew up, my mom always wore, like, a jade green bracelet. And back then, I used to think it was, like, not cute. Like, I don't know why I didn't think it was cute, but now I love it. My mom actually gave me her... I'll find it for you guys. My mom gave me her jade green ring. I don't wear it because I feel like it doesn't suit my style as much, but I love it. It's so beautiful, but... Yeah, this is what my mom gave me. <laughs> so for today's eye look, I mentioned it in my reveal video. It's going to be a pretty subtle eye look, but I'm going to use Jade just as a subtle pop of color. But I definitely will be showing you guys more looks to come. I also have a playlist of other creators who have done reviews on the entire collection who have done pretty intense makeup looks and they are so beautiful. Their placement of their shadows, I would never think of. So I'll leave that playlist up here for you guys if you want to check it out but today we're doing something quite subtle because that is just me. So we're first gonna go into the shade Serene over here as my transition shadow. And as I'm placing this into my crease, let's hop into the next question, which is what is your favorite part of developing? I really enjoyed it all. I think it was such a fun, unique experience. And you know, collabing with the brand is such a rare opportunity. Like not many people will really ever get opportunity to do so. So I feel very, very grateful that you know, I was able to. I'm just like really trying to soak it all in. So yeah, I enjoyed it all. And the next question is, what's your favorite shade and what's your most indecisive shade? So I would say Overheat is probably my most used metallic. And then Serene, the shade that's in my crease right now, is my most used matte. I obviously use Chlor a lot as well. But my favorite shade... I would say it would have to be Solar Flare and Amber. I think they stand out to me the most. But watching a lot of reviews, people really like Jade and Luna and Solar Flare. I think like these three is like the popular shades, which surprisingly were the three shades that were not in the original lineup. I'm glad I added them in because that's what people like. My most indecisive shade um, was probably Luna actually. I don't know, I had a hard time with the metallics. I just didn't know which metallics to add in that will complement the mattes. Okay, then we just have more general questions here. The first one is, what makes this different from other Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year collections? I think first off, this is not released um, during Lunar New Year, although it did kind of release around the mid-autumn festival season, um, which that was definitely not planned. And a lot of brands release it then and it kind of feels like a cash grab and it's not really done, I guess, well in my opinion because they don't, first off, they only take product shots, they never show it on Asian models. So that really feels like the doing the bare minimum for this collection. And you know, I'm just speaking for some brands, you know, ones that I have seen. Um, I feel like they don't put their all in for this collection. They just make some products or they just take a product they already have in their collection and just do a new packaging, which is fine. But like, I don't know, it just it doesn't sit right with me you know i'm happy for it because it's better than nothing and also i feel like with these collections there's just no representation they don't send it to asian creators like i don't see any asian creators talking about these collections uh so it kind of makes like no sense to me and i think with this collection they picked an Asian creator. I mean, it could have been anyone, but I was lucky enough to be that creator that actually is Chinese. And the fact that they reached out to me wanting to create a palette with my culture, 
that is Odin's Eye initiative to add representation into their collection and with this collection at the final stages I gave them a list of my favorite Asian creators that are my friends that I was able to get the address obviously I have a lot of Asian creators that I love but I'm not like mutuals with so it wouldn't make sense if I reached out to them asking for their address they probably want to see my message anyway so I just reached out to mutuals so Odin's Eye did send the PR collection to their PR list but I sent them a list of names that I wanted this to be sent out to so whether those creators were really micro I didn't care I just wanted to send this out to people that were Asian that could give representation to this palette and I think that's what makes this collection a lot different from the typical Chinese New Year collections that you see. I want to shout out um, Shishi's collab with BH at the beginning of the year. I kind of took inspiration from her because I know with her collection she made sure that she sent out her palettes to Asian creators. That's how I got her collection because they were looking for Asian creators to send it out to. I feel like Shishi's collab was like the only Chinese New Year collab I really liked. So yeah I think that's why to me the Red Dragon palette feels a lot different from other Luna New Year collections. Maybe I'm biased because I'm on the back end and I'm literally the face of this palette. Um, but yeah, I think we just did different steps and just to represent, like we genuinely want to represent the Chinese culture. So it's not like a cash grab or anything like Odin's Eye. Genuinely reached out to three different creators with three different backgrounds, different skin tones, everything to create this diverse collection. That's why it's called the Legendary Diversa Collection. But anyway, I'm gonna go into the shade Claw now. Just gonna take a little bit on my brush because I sort of wanna like mute it down a little bit. Um, we're just gonna take this to the outer corners of our eyes. And while we're doing this, the next question is, what is your zodiac sign? So I'm born in 96, which makes me the year of the rat or the mouse. I feel like rat doesn't sound so cute. So the year of the mouse. What I love about this palette is that if you're born in the year of the dragon, or if you know someone that is, um, this would be like a great gift, I feel. Um, so I'll put the years over the screen of when Year of the Dragon is born in. I personally don't know anyone. I'm sure I have like family that is born in the Year of the Dragon, but in my age gap, it would either be 1988 or 2000. And I don't think I know anyone in those years. You know, I think I have family that's in those years, but yeah. I think my dad's a dragon, 1964. <laughs> I should probably. I should probably know that. I'm now gonna go ahead and take the shade Jade and we're just gonna sweep this at the center of our eyes just for a slight pop of color and we're just going to build Jade on slowly and just really diffuse that out. This is a very subtle way to add Jade. I wore this eye look in, what was the video? Uh, products I would like makeup brands to come out with. I was wearing this look in it and you can see like there's like a little subtle green in there just taking like a fluffy brush and like working that in. So I'm also going to take that just over here a little bit at the lower lash line. And now I'm going to go ahead and take this shade Solar Flare. And we're going to place this at the inner third of my eyes. That's going to tie really well with the jade. And sometimes Solar Flare, although it's like a very intense like sort of chartreuse lime green. It almost has like a gold undertone to it. So again, it's like subtle and very wearable. But the next question is, what kind of lessons did you learn while doing this collab? I think I learned so much, like in every aspect about like collabing with another brand and, you know, makeup, the whole makeup process. I also learned a lot about myself. Um, it ties in with the next question that I got asked is, would you start your own brand? And I kind of learned from this process is that I would probably never, well, this is me right now, that obviously could change but I don't think it's gonna change. I don't think I'll ever create my own makeup brand unless I have like an idea that is like very unique and it will add something different to the makeup industry which is something that's really really hard to do. What I learned from this collection about myself is that I'm very picky and I'm a perfectionist and I care a lot about what other people think. To a certain point that is a good trait to have but I think for me it's kind of like past that point and it's getting really bad where it like affects my daily life. Like when we announced this collection like I was literally glued to my phone and I was just like reading every single comment and like 
the response has been great. No one has said anything bad. Like, I kind of expected the type of response we would get. Like, like I knew that my palette to Odin's Eyes audience um, and to the people on their PR list that my palette would probably be kind of like their least favorite. No one has said that because they're all so kind and nice. But I know that Annette's and Tina's palette really stand out because they're very colorful and I think that's like their niche. But I knew that when I would show you guys my palette, I know that you guys would like my palette because we have a similar style and I think, you know, I read all of your comments guys, like in every single video, I see your feedback and everything. And when you guys compliment certain looks, you guys typically comment on the looks that are, you know, more my style, so. And I'm sure you guys subscribe to me because you like my makeup style, and I'm sure you subscribe to Annette and Tina because you like their makeup style. I think all of our palettes really represent us really well. So I feel like I'm really rambling off the question. So it's like, what did you learn, and would you start your own brand? So I feel like I just care about other people's opinion too much. Like, I literally, I couldn't sleep, you guys. I'm, like, losing sleep over this, and I don't think that's, like, a really good mindset to have when you know, if you were gonna start your own brand. I think I just care too much about what people think. I definitely wanna start like my own business or brand one day, but I don't think it would ever be makeup. All right, so now I'm just gonna do my winged liner. So you guys know how much I love to smoke out my wings. So I'm gonna take Claw and a bit of Aurora just to really smoke out this wing. And here is the final eye look completed. I just popped on some false lashes. These are from Petite Cosmetics in the style Honey, one of my favorite lashes. But we're now gonna move on to the cheeks. So I did apply a cream bronzer earlier and I'm actually gonna go in with Serene, the same transition shadow that I used earlier. I'm using this brush from the Morphe Times Makeup Ariel collection, the A22. It's been my favorite brush to apply my eyeshadows as a blush because it's like very skinny and it's like tapered, but it's not too dense. So I'll just take a little bit like this, tap it off, and then I'll actually apply it on the back of my hand first because it's better to go in with a little than too much. And then I feel like this brush just really applies it evenly. And this is just another way I like to get more use out of my palette. Obviously, if you don't feel comfortable with applying eyeshadow onto your skin, then, you know, that's all good. I personally don't, haven't had any, like, reactions or anything. Like, I don't see it being bad. But you can see Serene is a really nice a peachy blush. It's very me, I would say. And it kind of just like completes the look. It really matches really well. So another question we have is would I work with Odin's eye again? And of course if the opportunity did come up again, I would love to. But I would also love Odin's eye to, you know, further expand their collaborators and just give opportunities to other people. I would love more people to collab with Odin's Eye and bring their own spin, I think. I'm having my chance right now and I, I'm really appreciative of that, but, and I would love to work with them again, but I also think it would be really nice for them to collab with other creators and maybe do something similar again in the future with different cultures and just bring more representation. Of course, I would love to see them collab with other Asian creators as well and keep doing that because I think that they definitely have the right mindset and they're going in the right direction. And here we have the final makeup look, a very subtle olive peachy green eye look. I love how it's still subtle and warm, but we do have that pop of color there. And to wrap it up, the last question was just some ways to wear the scarf or to use the scarf. So you could wear it like a bandana. I'll show you a photo of my friend Jennifer. She wore it like this, like a bandana. I thought that was really cute. In my video where I was using Tina in Annette's palette, I just wore it as a headband. So you just roll it up like this and then you just tie it around like a headband. I saw Nikki Raven wear it as like a scarf around her neck. You could tie it on your bag for a pop of color. Those are the ways I would probably style it. My mom actually displayed this on the wall. I probably will get this like framed 
and display it somewhere maybe in the garage or something because it is really bright it doesn't go with my like decor and everything but there's just some ways you could use a scarf just like any other silk scarf that you might have but that you guys is going to conclude today's video i hope you guys enjoy just hearing me talk about more of the behind the scenes of red dragon and how it came to be i really do want to thank you guys so much for your support i know i've been saying this in every video but like truly like it really is such a rare opportunity to collab with a brand especially with a brand you love and just having such a positive feedback like it is really really crazy so i can't thank you guys enough and thank you guys for watching this video thank you for being interested in red dragon and just hearing more about the story of course i do have more looks to come i know that's something that you guys really want to see is more looks and yes of course i'm going to keep talking about this palette until it's over like i'm going to show you way more look but again there is a playlist of Red Dragon and other creators who have created more looks, definitely check them out because they are all so lovely and beautiful and all their looks are stunning with all of our palettes. But that is going to conclude today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!